The excessive life and the contradiction. So the question has been, why did Jesus bring us a life that is overflowing and overflow? Why did Jesus bring us a life that is by default a life that should run over, a life that should take over, a life that should roll over? Why did Jesus bring us a life that by default is excessive, is superfluous, is extraordinary, is beyond measures, exceeding in rank and needs, exceeding rank and needs, above what is necessary? Why did Jesus bring this? And so many people have Jesus. And they, they don't know this life. I don't talk about having this life. They don't even know this life. How do we reconcile this? I've been asking God this question. Why, why is this life excessive and scarce? Why did Jesus Christ bring this? Uh, John 3.16. John 3.16. Let's look at John 3.16. I'm just wondering. I'm just, I'm just like wondering. I am, so I'm wondering aloud with you. Can we read this together, please? No, I don't accept it. So I'm so sorry. Rise to your feet. Read it like it matters to you, please. This everlasting life is what Jesus Christ said is excessive life, super abundant life, John 10.10. 10. Stay with me in that scripture. Look at what God did. God so loved the world. He did not sell his son. If he sold his son, it would mean before you have the life he brought, you have to buy. You have to, first of all, have resources to buy. So what did God do? God gave how will God give and we don't have? Now, that's a question you should ask yourself. Please do ask. How will God give the son who is this life? He said, I came so that you might have life and have it super abundantly, excessively, perisos, perisos, extraordinarily, excessively, super, uh, super flossly, super abundantly and um, beyond rank and need. How will God give this life in his son and you don't have it? And we don't have it. And you have to doubt whether this is actually true. There are many Christians that by the time they listen to this teaching, they will doubt I am saying the truth. Because when we say, so that you may have life and have it to the full. It's so easy to say to the full. But to the full means excessive. It's a life that is not necessary or necessary life. It is beyond necessity. It is superfluous, super abundant, overflowing. How will God give and then it is so scarce? Scarce in church, scarce in our hearts, scarce everywhere. So we have been trying to trace where the problem lies. And last week, we identified the problem. Be seated, family. I love you so very much. So sorry about that. Bele? Bele, sincerely. When next I want to ask to stand up, I will... Okay, so Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. I don't know what you did with this. I have begged God this morning. I beg, I say, God, I don't even know whether what I teach makes sense. I don't even know what... Whether somebody's life is being taught, sometimes I feel so frustrated. Peter preached one, one, one sermon and thousands of people got converted. And every day we are preaching, we feel everywhere in the internet. What is wrong with us? So I'm just asking God about Simbok. Just help me. I don't know whether you prayed, but I'm, I have prayed for you. Because this thing is either we are lying or we are telling the truth. And how are we going to prove somebody's life practically? Say, I want to be a proof. Are you sure? Are you saying it because I said you should say? Do you want to prove this abundant life? Then rise to your feet and rise, raise your two hands and, and talk to God like you are very angry. Say, Lord, I want to be a proof of this life. Say, Lord, if this life is true, in the way you are talking, I'm discouraged. I don't, I don't know. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, if this life is true, I want to be a proof. Teach me the knowledge of this life. Give me the wisdom of this life. Give me the insight of this life. 
Lord, give me the vision of this life. Lord, give me the, the workings of this life. Lord, reveal the mystery of this life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be seated. Be seated. So, we came to the scary reality that the reason why this life is so scarce is because the container of this life is rubbish, is, is dust. Sincerely. The first lady, by the way, I saw the photograph of the first lady, the last of the women and the mother. I just almost brought tears from my mouth because she's a mother. Amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs> dust, say dust. So when somebody gave me this and I said I will use it, the first lady was very surprised. She knows something. There are many things given to me that I may not have to use. Maybe I, give me things. <laughs> Don't look at me like, okay, I wanted to give you a car. So, and then, <laughs> that's what I see on your face. Like, oh, I thought I wanted to give you a car so you will not, I will use it. <laughs> <laughs> So when this gift came, I told the person I'm going to use this gift. And I told the first lady, ah, somebody gave me a gift. I, I can't wait to use it. And I love it so much. It's a container of water. And Chief, Chief did something. Remember Chief? Chief I, I and Chief, we have very funny relationship. She sent me, he sent me text. I don't reply, but I take note. <laughs> and he understands me. He doesn't quarrel. He told me, I used to drink water from bottle. He said, kingly people don't drink water from bottle. But it's not true. If you look at UN, you didn't remember, so you send text and you don't remember. Look at UN, those very serious, I don't know of the Pope. Does the Pope drink water in the public? I don't know. So, bottle has no problem. But when somebody gave me, they said, thank God, she will no longer have to bother me about bottle. So, I drank. <laughs> Chief Visitor, thank you. This is container. And water can do nothing against, can do nothing concerning this container. Water can only accept this container. And if this container leaks, water has no option except to do what? To leak. If this container contaminates, water has no option except to be contaminated. Just wanted to tell you the importance of container. Please, this is where the problem is. God gives us pure water, clean, wonderful gift. But the container is where we have to solve the problem. The problem is not with, you can never doubt the word of God and say, did God really give us life that is excessive? Is the word of God true? If the word of God is true, how come I am not experiencing it? No, the word of God is true. The, word, the, the life of God is true and available. God will never take back his word and his life. The problem is with the doors. That's where it is. I cannot have more life than I can contain. This container can desire to hold 500 liters. That's a desire, right? But this container will only hold what it can hold. Whereas the desire still remains legitimate. There's nothing wrong with desiring. But desire does not change anything. Reality is that if you are one centiliter in capacity, that's the capa that is the content, that is how much you can have. And if you, if you are leaking, dirty, like dirty container, pour very clean water into dirty container, it becomes dirty water. This is the mystery. Once you are able to settle the container factor, the excessive life dimension takes care of itself. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that today, please do something. Open the eyes of somebody. Open the eyes of somebody. 
Let this mystery become real. Let this word become flesh. Let this word change somebody's story. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. So Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So why did God... And we looked at the word dust. Last week we just looked at dust. Dust means ashes, debris, dirt, rubbish. These four words or three words stand out for me. The word, the dust of the ground is from the Hebrew word afar. A-P-H-A-R. Afar. And it means dead. But dead. Debris or debris things that fall apart things that that fall from what has fallen what has crumbled what has been destroyed every time you see debris or debris it means something has collapsed it means rubbish heap of rubbish rubble dead ashes that is what the scripture is saying, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So the first thing the Holy Spirit is ministering to me is a question. Why did God make the man who will rule? And before God made man in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, he made a statement of definition of identity about man in, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Let's see that. Then God said, let us make man in our what? Come on, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Say, I follow. Then God said, let us do what? Come on. Speak it out. Let us do what? According to what? And what will they have? Let them have. You need to listen to the message in the Rising Stars Assembly to understand this dominion. Let them be in charge. Let them be above. Let them be excellent, preeminent, prominent, superior. Let them rule over. Let them govern. How will God want to make a being in his image and likeness? And how he makes it is to gather dirty things. Rubbish. Did God really want man to succeed? Sorry. Sorry. Have you ever thought about this? This is eye-opening. How will God, he say, let us make man in our image and likeness, carry that man will be a God on earth. If you are begotten of a lion, you are a lion. If you are begotten of a spirit, you are a spirit. If you are begotten of God, you are a God. And the scripture says, he has said, you are God's. That was the intention of God that God will walk the earth as man and man as God will walk the earth but how will God make God his image and likeness look at the raw material God didn't look for gold God didn't look for angelic nature and God gathered dust who can attempt that Anybody, just, just let's share something. Please. This is eye-opening. I've never asked this question. Did God intend man to, to succeed? While you are still thinking of answering that question, let me take you to scripture again. That Genesis chapter 2. Please, while you still think, let's quickly look at that same Genesis chapter 2. What God did concerning the man. Verse 15. I'm sure you know I always preach here. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to walk it and take care of it. Verse 16. Everyone read it. Give me that scripture. Give me that scripture in NIV. Please, let's reason. I want you to take something home today. Because if you get the mystery in Revelation, your life will change. Read it in NIV. What does it say? Then the Lord God took the man and put him where? 
in the garden to do what? To work it and take care of it. Next verse. And the Lord God commanded. Now, this is a command, not suggestion. That means even though God is making gods, but these gods are under his command. Okay. And what was the command? No, no, read it everyone. What's the command? You are free to do what? It's from every tree. Next verse. You must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and what? What will happen? Now, let's place it. He said, let us make man in our image and likeness. And when he made man, he made man of rubbish. He took rubbish together and breathed his life. Now, the mystery, the secret of this, God made man and planted in the very heart of man dependence on him. The fact of the first and raw material of man as dust means at no time, at no moment, will man lean away from God. Who is the spirit? The day it leans away from God, he will land in rubbish. He will land in debt, in rubble, in... <laughs> I love you, sir. Did you hear what I just said? This is what the secret of this message. And in order to show that dependence, when he put man to work, he placed limits in, in freedom. He told man you are free. But your freedom has limits for as long as you are under me. And when you set limits on somebody, it means you are putting that person to depend on you. Have you seen a dog being walked by the owner before? And they strap the leash. So the dog owner, the dog is free to walk home. The dog is not carried by the owner. The dog is walking with the owner. But the point is that the dog cannot go far away from where? I mean real dogs, so I, mean, I don't mean the dogs of our neighborhood. Say my time I mean dogs that have status of dogs and serious dogs. Owners put leash and hold them. And that leash will form a radius. And a radius will do something, will define a circle. A little bit of my mathematics, just a little bit. A radius, pi. It's your pi and radius. Bomoforo. <laughs> it will draw a circumference. It will draw a circle. It means for as long as you depend on me, you stay within this circumference. You stay within the circle. That is where the super abundant life lies. The excessive life of God. So when you go back to John chapter 10 and verse 10, come on, is somebody listening to this teaching? Come on, rise and pray in the Holy Ghost. Whether you have gift of tongues or not, just say something. You don't need to borrow money to say, you don't need that, Naira and Binan or Binance. So just speak in tongues, just say something about sing what mean Boki come for Lord Randa Kato Prele Kata. Speak in the Holy Ghost. Let the fire of the word of God come into your life. Let the mystery of the word of God be revealed to your life. Let this word open your womb. Let this word heal cancer in the breast. Let this word open your mind. Let this word open offices. Let this word change marriages. Let this word cause a woman who could not walk to walk again. Who could not stand to stand again. Let blood dry up hemorrhage. This word is bringing healing. This word is taking away cataract. This word is restoring eyes. This word is taking a heavy stone from somebody's head. Shout Jesus. Shout louder Jesus. Be seated, be seated. The thief does not come except to do what? Steal. Steal what? 
It does not come except to kill. Kill what? Except to destroy. Destroy what? I have come that they may have. Have what the devil, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to do what? Destroy. How are they going to have a dog walking with the honor? Oh my goodness. Praise God. Praise God. Who has a long tie? Oh, you want to remove it? Okay. Since you want to remove it, will you also walk like a dog? <laughs> come, come, sweetheart. Sorry. Sorry. No, no, okay, fine. Fine. Can you make a little, a little of it and put it around your hand, not your neck? Okay. No, not your neck. Mbok. 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 Your hand. Oh, praise God. I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up. No, try to go far. Try to go far. And to God, try to go far. And try to go far. Go far. No, don't fight with me. Just damn it. Just eat something around like a dog. <laughs> no, just go about life in relationship, getting married, doing business. Just do everything you do. You know, the radius is the same. Everywhere we go, the radius is what? The same. There is nowhere we go to that is distance from me will increase. Am I communicating? Please, if you understand, raise your hand, let me see. Okay, so if we go into marriage, what will happen? The same, the same distance. That means... While in marriage, it stays in my circle. While doing business, where is he? That is Genesis chapter 2 verse 16. Look at it again. Genesis chapter 2 verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are do what? Free to marry. Free to travel abroad. Free to do politics. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Free to be in relationship. Free to do ministry. Free in your... Everything. Nothing is wrong. So you cannot say, oh, Christians should not be in politics. Nonsense. Christians should... Nonsense. Do business. Make wealth. You are free to do what? Make wealth. You are free to aspire to the highest office. Just that... In that highest office, you don't go beyond this. The day you go beyond this, what will happen? You fall back to rubbish. You fall back to the first part of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Look at the again, Genesis chapter 2, the, verse part, the first part of verse 7. Then the Lord God formed the man from what? Yeah. So the only, the only excellence about man is in staying within the radius. Let's test whether this thing is true. Let's go to the seraph's area. Try and go and just try and make sure this thing is extended that you are, you go wider. Let me stand here. Just let's see. Okay. Now, now, do something. Untie yourself. Try to move away. Try. No, wait. Don't clap. He untied himself. I'm still holding this. I'm still ho Am I still holding this? But I'm no longer in control of what is happening in his life. I'm still holding this. Oh. This is supposed to keep him in the abundant life. This is supposed to keep him in the excessive life. This is supposed to keep him in an endless life. I have I let it go? I am still holding it. But what happens? It's no longer in my circle. He has gone back to rubbish. 
That's how marriages that are contracted in church go bad overnight. People untie, unhinge themselves. That's what the devil did in John, in Genesis chapter 3. Come and take this. God bless you, sir. Before I say something else, can you just rise to your feet? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, don't let me untie myself from you. Speak those words. Speak those words. Lord, don't let me untie. Don't let me untie myself. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Say, Lord, don't let me. And if you had untied yourself from God, if you had untied yourself from God, say, Lord, I come back, come back, come back. I come back to your circle. I come back to your second friends. I come back to the radius. Lord, I come back. Say, Lord, don't let me live outside you. Don't let me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I'm asking, let this word change somebody's life forever. Amen. Amen. Be seated. So it's not church. It's not a pastor that keeps marriage. A lot of people say, oh, that, that pastor, every wedding, every marriage that he, that he celebrates, after five years, he's gone. It's either, there are two possibilities. The man does not teach people. He does not give people the connection I'm talking about. That people just want to wed people to increase the number of people who have wedded in church. But if the man has done everything he should do, the power of the man stops where his work stops. He cannot preserve marriage. No power store is powerful enough to make your children godly. There's something I could say now that I have to forbid myself from saying. They show sure people sitting in church and hearing you. And they want to engage life. And they unhinge, unhinge themselves, untie themselves. And expect to have the consequence of God. God watches people die. Not because he cannot do anything. He gave man choice. He said, you are free to eat everything. Everything is for your abundance, super abundant. You will not lack anything. In every hard situation, there will be a way for you. Stay within my circle. But the day you untie yourself from me, you shall certainly do what? Die. Now, if you see, after Adam and Eve ate, they did not die the way we expect, that they just mort. No. They, they fell back to dust insignificance useless hopeless helpless everything as a child of God at any point in time you unhinge you untie yourself from the commitment of the word of God the word of God remains with God what he said remains so it is not his will that you shall perish it is so, it can never change. He loves you with everlasting love. It is so, it can never change. He will not, he can't stand to see you suffering. Everything, I have loved you, you are the apple of my eye. You are special and dear to me. I gave my son to die for you. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That love cannot change. So God doesn't kill anybody. God doesn't send anybody to hell. When we on ourselves from what God says we begin to walk by what we say, what society says, what political circles say, what ministry religious circles say what social media says about marriage what teachers say about children what society expects no longer what God says at that moment we can no longer have what God said we will have which is excessive superfluous life we will have a life but it will be a life of dust of death of rubbish 
I'm grateful for this insight. I had to beg God and cry. He said, I don't know. I, I, I doubt myself. Am I communicating? What am I doing? Let somebody understand this. Because it looks like either God is lying or I am lying or something is wrong. God, I, I, the thief came to steal, kill and destroy. But I came so that you may have life and have it at the perilous level. At the super abundant, excessive, extraordinary, limit, less beyond rank, limit, uh, rank and need level. So that's it. The thief does not come except to steal. This is it. So it goes back to God commanding. So the reason why, let's answer this question. You will write it down. The reason why God made man, first of all, of the dust, of the rubbish, and then breathed, and it was after he breathed, man came alive. That means for as long as you depend on him, just as this word that I speak to you, they are what? spirit. So the word of God is to give you the spirit of God in every situation. The word of God is to keep you in the spirit of God in every situation. And in every situation, though you are in the flesh, but you live the life of God. A life that is beyond every limit of flesh. But the day you untie yourself from the world, which is what the devil wants, that day you fall back. When Adam and Eve ate the fruit, unhinged themselves, untied themselves from God, they were still breathing and walking around. They were no longer fit for the garden. They were no longer fit to be in church. They were no longer fit for life. They were no longer fit for glory. They were no longer fit for power. Every power was now hopelessness. It was now satanic power in the garden. The era of God man ended. That's why God man had to come in Jesus. And he said, I bring back to you the same life at a, a level that is the proportion and magnitude and degree that is completely higher and deeper and perfect and definitive. But it is the plan of God that was shown to the first Adam. And the condition remains the same. What is the condition? Stay in the circle. Turn around and tell somebody, will you stay in the circle? Yeah, stay in the circle. Stay in the circle. Stay in the circle. Stay in the circle. Please stay in the circle. These days of people preaching God's love. Oh, God cannot send anybody to hell. It's true. God does not and God will not. But will you stay in the circle? The only connection between man, the man he made, and God in the garden was the word. Eat everything you are free. But what will happen? Don't eat this one. The day you eat, it is over. They ate, it was over. God had to start a new walk. The day you break from God, God's plans for you has to be fulfilled somewhere else. God starts a new walk. You can still make money, but you are no longer in the plan of God. You can have children, have a wonderful marriage, but you don't represent his interest. You are not fit to represent him. Remember, the whole arrangement of man was make man in our image and what? Man like God. So you can still be influential, but not the way God wanted. This is the mystery. Let me share one or two. Your dust. Everyone has dust. The flesh. The flesh is not just this soma. Greek calls it soma. The corporal thing. That if you pinch it, blood will come. That's not just the flesh. Desire. Feelings. Quests. Ambition. Ambition. Desire. Quests. Feelings. Greed. Lost. Nidia. Stomach. 
die Teubi die an so. All of these things, they constitute the flesh, the dust. The devil is as interested in the rubbish that God used in making man as God is interested. God made man of the rubbish so that man will depend on him. And the devil attacks man in the rubbish so that man will leave God. Because the devil knows the day you leave God, he is going to be the ruler. Because God will not rule this earth. He didn't make the earth for him to rule. No, God will not rule this earth. It is his man. The man in his image and likeness who is going to rule this earth. And when the man in his image and likeness fails to rule the earth, the one that was cast down from heaven, and the scriptures say, Woe unto the earth, for the one who is coming is coming with hate and anger. is coming to take over. And to take over, he needs a man who breaks away from God. Now, that man can be the best preacher and he still preaches. But his greatest work in church is to make people serve Satan. And there are people who are making church a convenient place for Satan to operate by what they teach. They break away and teach powerfully. And people use their word to trample upon the righteousness of God. And they have no need for repentance. Trample upon the holiness of God. And they have no need to, to bat eyelid. They, don't, they say no need for repentance. Why? The devil has taken over. One thing that defines the devil is that he can never repent. So anybody who says in the flesh that you reach a state you cannot repent, you cannot say, I'm sorry, you have entered into a satanic state. And that's what we pull, people expose in what is called grace doctrine. Not true grace doctrine, but the false grace doctrine that Satan is inspiring in the mouth of wonderful teachers of our generation. That once you are born again, you don't need to stay in alignment with his word. So in the business place, if business demands that you are smart, smart in an evil way in order to make it, it will not stop you from going to heaven. It's just the way of the earth. But the point is this. The God man was to rule the earth. And to rule the earth is to rule the earth in the righteousness of God. And the righteousness of God is the word of God that man binds himself to. This is why men call the name of the Lord but they don't live their life. They don't have the super abundance of God. God is not weak. Prayer does not change much when you are broken away from the word of God. Prayer is about bringing you back to the word of God. Prayer cannot give you the life of God outside you, walking in the radius of the word of God. So you fast and pray and you go into a life that God has specified in his word is not his plan for you. And you are in that life and you are fasting and praying that God will turn things around. You fast and pray till you die. Fasting and prayer does not make, turn night into day. It's just like somebody who has lied. Somebody who lies. Let's talk about lie. Whether that lie is you lie and you know it's lie and you know the consequences of the lie and you are praying God oh God please don't expose this lie yo. tell them now that you are lying now no so we use prayer to stay in darkness and hope that prayer will now become light in darkness not coming out of darkness oh it's like night. You don't, want to, you don't want morning time to come. 
and you want to now use prayer and many people praying for you many churches praying for you many ministers praying for you many mighty men and women of God praying for you and go prove yourself oh God please honor this mighty apostle haven't you seen this a mighty apostle haven't you seen this one haven't you seen this one Lord we have given seed to this one we have soon seed to this one Lord we have done this to this one Please, Lord, turn this night into day. Fasting and prayer does not change night into day. Night has a system of becoming day. This is how it works. This is why the excessive life is a scarce life. The devil attacks in the place of the doors. Please, we will continue in this story next week. But let me just show you something. And the devil fears nobody when he comes. As long as you are to the one to rule. Can I tell you something? You are the one to rule. Can I tell you something? You are the one. Every one of you sitting down here. What God sees about you is still Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. My image and like. Our image and what? Like. And let them do what? Let them rule. And they are still in, you are still Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Dust and rubbish. And I breathe into you. This word that I speak to you. They are spirit and they are what? Lie. So that you will lean on God and trust him. And depend on him. In that dependence you will know. The one who made you God is not your classmate. The one who made you his image and likeness. The one who made you beautiful. The one who made you handsome. The, made, the one who made you attractive. The one who made you wealthy. The one who made you eloquent. The one who made you favored. The one who made you mighty. The one who made you connected. Is not your mate. Not at no time will you be grown and big and mighty enough to talk like after that one is you or you are on the same page with him at the same level like equal no you are still dust rubbish nothing that if you depend on him you live in his honor and glory the day you break out from him your consequence and your story on earth instantly becomes useless dead rubbish nonsense Let's end it. I want to end it here. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Let's see what the devil does to the God man. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Are you still with me? If you are still here, say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I want what you want. I didn't hear you. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have not changed your mind about that life, he said, if you have not changed your mind about that life, I have not changed my mind. That is what I want. I want the life of God on earth. The life of God's radius. The life that is excessive. The life that is beyond satanic reach. The life that is beyond darkness. Lord, that is what you want. That is what I also want in Jesus' name. So let's look at God man. In Genesis chapter 3, we see what the devil did to the first God man on earth. God's image and likeness. God's nature, God's begotten on earth. He made man to disengage from God. And the circle of God vomited. The man walked and wandered away. What he saw was nakedness. What he saw was shame. What he saw was fear. What he saw, answer, this rubbish is shame. No matter how beautiful you are, as you are now, if something happens, you are undressed somewhere outside there. Even in these days of nakedness, these days of people making, paying a lot of money to walk naked. Sir, nakedness was to be covered. So anything that rubbish is nakedness is shame. Then Jesus being filled, look at the second, the last Adam. 
and we are the generation of the last Adam. Say, I, I am the generation of the last Adam. Glory to God. Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing. And afterward, when he had, when they had ended, I love this, when they, both of them, the devil <laughs> and God's son, God man, they were in a business together. Kai. And it's the spirit that led him there. And they had engagement together. When they had ended, he was hungry. Okay. Let's see the summary of the engagement. And the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, what are you going to do? Command this stone to become bread. Become bread means define what bread is to you. Define what marriage is to you. God may say that marriage is this, 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 this. But you have freedom to define what marriage is to you, right? God can say business is this, 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 this. You define it. You don't need to follow the order. Command this stone to become bread. The implication of command this stone to become bread is a, you can write a book, a big book, just out of that, just that verse. Command this stone, the issue of stone and bread is a deep thing. I have preached it in different ways, but this one I'm seeing a different thing. Define. And what is at stake here is hunger. Hunger is about the, this flesh. People join secret court. Hunger. And when we talk about hunger, your own hunger can just be that you cannot afford to buy gari enough for people in the family. That's all your hunger. Some people hunger means they must become president. For some people, hunger means they must own the only company that does that. That means any other company that does the same thing, they will do everything on earth to destroy. Recently, somebody told me about a minister that in the area that the minister is a minister, if you want to start church, you need either to submit to him and beg him to help you, or you need God to come from heaven and help you. If you go to a place to pay, to start church, you will go and pay two, three times higher to make sure it's not given to you. Now you go to another corner. People are saying, oh, this place is 100,000 naira. We'll give it to you. And by the time he knows, he goes and gives them one million naira. And you come back and say, sorry, somebody has brought a better offer. Go further. Check another place. And that's, he's still a preacher, very wonderful preacher. Very powerful preacher. It's just that he's hungry. He's hungry to be alone. Hungry to be the only cock that crows. So hunger are of different brands and shapes. So don't ever think your own hunger is the same as the hunger of another person. Respect your hunger, but just make sure your hunger keeps you in the circle. So the, the devil used, because it, hunger is in the flesh. This hunger of the flesh, of the dust, the rubbish, the hunger of loss, the hunger that leads people into pornography, that leads people into adultery, fornication, the, adult, the hunger that makes people steal, make people steal. Somebody told me about a particular place, I don't want to mention, the, a, a federal institution here in Aquaibum State. A new person coming in and sacking people indiscriminately and then hiring contract staff. Hiring contract staff so that he will not have obligation to them. He pays them peanut and the money of the regular staff he has sacked. And now he use contract staff. The staff means all of this money goes into what? His pocket. And you talk about Shell and Mobile and all of this. You know there is Shell that is British or that is hip in the hip. Uh, white people, whether it's um, Dutch or whatever. There is a shell that is Nigeria. So what happens in most of these multinationals, there are Nigerians who take over from the whites and they have two systems. One system for white people and the other system for what? Black people. And the one for black people is like they treat their brothers like monkeys, like dogs. And it's the same shell. 
That's why when we talk about power grid, national grid, breaking down, Nigeria has spent billions of dollars with the best of electric companies in the world to have a system that cannot be broken. Such money is spent in other places. You don't hear that a little Oboma brang, everywhere goes dark. And a little heat, everywhere goes blank. So the chief of army staff will say bodies of soldiers, dead soldiers are rotten and smelly because there is no power. Why? Because white people have their standard and they come. But black people say this, don't worry, this is Nigeria. We have our own standard. So this thing that should be $100,000, you take $50,000, give me $30,000, let's use $20,000 to do it. And sir, in Nigeria, almost every white man is a criminal. And they are made criminals by government officials and businessmen in Nigeria. And why, once white people know they can use you to make money, sir, they will not let you go. That's what is happening in Nigeria. That's why power is not working. That's why nothing is working. Not because we don't have money or we have not invested. In the time of Obasanjo, listen, let's let them tell us how much they spent in power sector in the time of Obasanjo. Let's move from the time of Obasanjo to Jonathan. Move from Jonathan to Buari. If we look at it, it goes into trillions or close to trillions of dollars. Sir, every day there is a little cloud. Nigeria goes into midnight. That's it. So, the word of God is to keep us in the standard of God. And if we untie ourselves and walk away, darkness becomes our portion. And all of this happens. And we say, where is God? That's, God is still in heaven. So, it's about flesh, hunger. Hunger of somebody. Oh, it's my turn to be in office. In one month, you are richer than the entire community. The last administration of government in Akwaibom State, I went to a particular part of Akwaibom State, an entire community is bought out, and cows are roaming around, eating everybody's thing. They have a family has bought and a whole world in that area. And what is what is their power? They were in government house, or they had connection in government house. Hunger. Hunger. If you are the son of God, command this stone to do what? Come back. And what did Joshua say? Joshua said the same thing Mary said. Joshua said the same thing Mary said. Mary said, let it be done to me according to your word. That's what we saw. Let's look at Luke's gospel. Chapter 1, verse 38. Matthew, Luke's gospel, chapter 1, verse 38. Then Mary said, behold, the maid servant of the Lord... Read, read it, read it, continue. According to your word. Some marriage can be according to word. Finance can be according to his word. But it can also be according to your hunger. When it is according to your hunger, then take stone, take anything and turn it in. So you no longer have respect for the word of God. And even when you make a mistake, you don't have any reason to repent and say, God, I'm sorry, and go back to making it work. After all, you don't need a God who gives you standard. And Jesus Christ said to the devil, it is written, rise to your feet, I'm done. Don't tempt me to preach further. Wanted to stop at 12 and you didn't allow me. Now don't let me go further. Let's read this together. But Jesus answered him. What did he say? It is written. Now, it is written takes us back to holding it. We are staying together. And Pilate said something. The best thing that Pilate said in the whole story of Jesus Christ is, what is written is what? It's written. These days of interpreting and rescripting and changing Bible, such that we don't even know which one is true and which one is not true. It is written. The Son of God said it is what? written you shall not live by bread Hello. that means when it comes to anything in life it's not about how you feel it's not about your hunger your appetite your ambition 
your desire. It's not what will make you comfortable. It's not what will make you popular. It's not what will make you trend. It's not what will make you acceptable and people will clap for you. It's not what will make everybody follow you and like you and share you and comment on you. It is not that. It is written. Man does not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word. So this life that is excessive, that is overflowing, is in the world. Not the word as quoted. Because when we talk about this word, is in the See people, do, when they are having conversation with the devil, devil, it is written. It is written. Touch not my anointed. And do know my prophet know him. The point is this, are you his prophet? Are you his anointed? That one doesn't come up. It is written. It is written. So, we call God and God doesn't answer us. And we invent gods and preachers and systems that will make us look like God has answered us. Eyes closed, hands lifted. Have a very brief conversation with God. I will not break away from you. And if you had already defined your own life, how you want it, what will make church powerful in your own thinking? What will make church relevant to your thinking? This thing is not about church. Oh. Tell God I come back. I bring myself back to the covenant of your word. Please, can you have a speak? Let there be a witness in the spiritual place, in the heavenly place. That on this day you spoke and you talked to God. Please don't sing with me. Just speak. Just speak. And you do can see I return. I return my heart. I return to you in my relationship, in my marital relationship, in my financial engagement, in my business. Lord, I return. To whom shall we go? Lord, where, where else do we go? You are the one. You, you have the word of eternal life. You have the word of the life that flows forever. Please don't let me walk away. Please, Lord, don't let me walk away. Don't let me break away from you. Don't let me untie, no matter how trendy, no matter how popular, no matter how beautiful, no matter how widely accepted and celebrated it is. Lord, keep me in your circle. Keep me in your hand. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my I've been held in your hands From the moment I wake up Until I live I will see Of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire darkest night you are close like no one I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am
talk to his goodness, say, Lord. Let your goodness take me back to him. Let your goodness redeem me by the blood. Say, so Lord Jesus, I turn my heart, turn my soul, turn my spirit because of your goodness. You will not walk away from me, Lord. In any way I have walked away, Lord, I return, I return. Lord, I return, I return, I return. Lord, I return, I return, I return. Return, I know your, your goodness will never walk away. Your goodness keeps chasing me. Your goodness keeps running after me. But Lord, keep me. Bring me back. Say, Lord, I repent completely and totally. Say, today I accept your word as standard again. I accept your righteousness. I accept your holiness. I accept your life. I accept your promises. Lord, I accept your forgiveness. Say, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In any way I define marriage for myself. In any way I define business for myself. In any way I, I define relationship for myself. For my convenience. In any way I define real leadership. And uh, business life uh, and wealth creation. In any way I define politics to suit me. I define society for myself. Lord I repent. I return to you. It's about what you say. It's about what you say. Say, Lord, I bow to your word. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Say it with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. I submit to your word. And I submit to you. Say, you are the word of the Father. I submit to you. As God's covenant over me. I didn't hear you. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. I submit to you. The word of God. The covenant of God over me. You are my keeper. It is in you I am kept in the Father's circle. Don't let me walk away. Don't let me do my things. Don't let me, don't let me run my show. You were governed by the word of the Father. Let me be governed by the word of the Father. You did not break away from the word of the Father. Please don't let me be broken. Don't let me break away from the word of the Father. In any way I broke away from the word of the Father, show me mercy. Bring me back. I want to pray for sick people. I want to pray for anybody who is sick. I just want to ask God. I want you to pray for your need. Just open your mouth and ask God for anything. Let's agree. As we pray, let's pray for Nigerian economy. This is, in, this is not about Naira and dollars. This is about the lives of Nigerians. Life has become so cheap. So cheap that milk is more expensive than life. Sugar is more expensive. Salt, oil is more expensive than life. As you pray, let's pray for Nigeria. Lord, we ask for intervention. We don't know how you will do it. Tinubu may not have been prepared, but he's there, Lord. Send help. Those around him may not have solution, Lord. It's not about them, Lord. Send help. Those in Abuja may be there. They have everything they need, and they don't feel the pain. They don't buy diesel. They don't buy cars. They don't buy petrol. So they don't feel it, Lord. But it's not about them, Lord. Raise men with goodwill. Raise women. Raise those who can turn this situation around. Lord, life has become too cheap. For the sake of crying children of God across Nigeria. Those who just want to leave. They don't want to drive vehicles. They don't want to have luxurious properties. They just want to be alive, Lord. Show mercy in Jesus' name. Pray for your needs. Just open your mouth. Ask God for something this week. Did I tell you God has not changed his mind? His plan for you is still abundant life. It's still overflowing life. His plan for you is still a life without end. Can you just ask him and say, I'm not afraid? No. I'm in that space for you. Pray for him. 
Pray for his healing. Pray for his spirit. Pray for him to visit. And I Come and heal the sick. Come and heal the sick. Your sickness, I break your yoke. I break your chain. I break your power. You serpentine spirit. You python spirit. I bind you. I cast you out. You marine power. You lost power. You lion spirit. You shame spirit. You fear spirit. You disgraced spirit. You poverty spirit. You depressed spirit, depression spirit. I command you, get out to the abyss. Don't come back. I command healing. Healing in your body. Healing in your soul. Healing in your spirit. Healing. Healing. Let there be healing in your blood. Let there be healing in your bone. Let there be healing. Let it be healing. Let it be healing. Healing in your house. Healing in your marriage. Healing in your marital bed. Healing in your emotion. Lord, let it be healing in this house. Let it be healing in this house. Lord, there is healing in this house. Doors are open. Doors are open. Doors of recovery. 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 Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Doors of marriage. Doors of marriage. Doors of marriage. Doors of business. Doors of wealth. Doors of favor. Doors of grace. Doors of glory. 